Canon is announcing the Canon EOS R1 in the first quarter of 2024, a camera that's been four years in the making. Canon will finally have an answer to the Sony Alpha 1 and the Nikon Z9. But there's another high-end flagship camera that's also due out in 2024 in time for the Paris Olympics. And sources say it might very well have a global shutter. And it's not a Sony. Want to know more? Then stick around after this short message for all the details. But first, subscribe to this channel for a chance to win a Canon EOS R5. I'll be giving one away to one lucky subscriber once this channel reaches 100,000 subscribers. Anyone above the age of 18 with a valid mailing address is eligible. Additional terms and conditions are linked in the description down below. According to Nikon rumors, Nikon will be releasing the Nikon Z9H in the first half of 2024 in the same context as the Nikon D1H. Although the D1H had super high speed image processing capable of speeds continuous shooting up to five frames per second. And if you've got a slight grin on your face, well, you're probably thinking back to a time when five frames per second was considered super fast, very fast indeed. And yeah, that's why I'm smiling too. But anyhow, the Nikon Z9H is basically a high-speed version, a variant of the Nikon Z9 with a few small differences. And when I say small, well, that's a bit of an understatement. Now, the whole purpose of the Z9H is about raw performance, delivering high speed, although there are a few trade-offs. And one of the biggest trade-offs, it will have half the pixels as the Nikon Z9. So half the pixels? Well, that brings us to right about 23 or 22.85 megapixels to be exact. I'm not saying it's going to be that exact amount, but based on what Nikon Rumors is telling us, we're looking at around 24, 22 megapixels. And I know what you're thinking. That sounds like a competitor to the Canon EOS R3. Released in November of 2021, it has a 24 megapixel stacked sensor. And of course, Sony customers in the audience right now are grinning because, well, Sony just announced the A9 Mark III, capable of 24.6 megapixels, right around the same resolution as the Canon EOS R3. But it's not going to have a backside illuminated sensor. It's not even going to have a stack sensor. It's going to have a global sensor, so that beats out the Canon EOS R3. In fact, the Sony A9 Mark III, it's going to have the newest tech. Along with that global sensor, it's going to be the king of the hill, at least for a short period of time. Because the Nikon Z9H may also have a global shutter, according to Nikon rumors. But do you notice the question mark there and that it's in brackets? So the Nikon Z9H is real. It's supposed to be coming out sometime in the first half of 2024. It's going to have a global shutter, at least according to Nikon rumors, and it's supposed to be a competitor to the Canon EOS R3 with a stack sensor and the Sony A9 Mark III with a global shutter sensor. And that's pretty well all we know about it. Oh no, wait, there's one more thing. The Nikon Z9H is also supposed to have a high resolution mode. So half the resolution, but it's getting a high resolution mode. And let's just go ahead and call this pixel shift. And what I hope Nikon's doing here is not following Canon's lead with the Canon EOS R5. Well, it does have pixel shift, pixel shift capable of 400 megapixels. It's only working with static objects. It doesn't work with moving objects. And if you've got any shake in the camera, your shot's ruined. The Sony A7R5 is not only able to produce 200 megapixel pixel shift images, but it's able to deal with moving subjects within the frame, like a car. Are you excited? Are you excited about the Nikon Z9H? And if you're not a Nikon customer, or if this camera's a little bit out of your affordable reach, well, let's just take a step back a, mi a, bit, <laughs> a minute here, because we have an awful lot planned for 2024. Let's start off with Canon. The Canon EOS R5 was announced and released back in July of 2020. Well, it started shipping at the end of July, and that camera has been very popular. Canon is refreshing that camera in 2024, early 2024, likely in time for CP Plus with the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. But they're not going to stop there. They're also going to be announcing the Canon EOS R1, their flagship mirrorless cameras, four years in the works, along with a whole bunch of lenses, and hopefully, 
the 35 millimeter f1.2 or f1.4 will be part of that. And for Panasonic, we're expecting a refresh of the S1 series. Now, at this point, we don't know if we're going to get a successor for each of the cameras, the S1 II, the S1 R2, or the S1 H2. I wouldn't be surprised if Panasonic takes the S1 R and the S1 and just merge them together into a single unit and then focus on photography for that and videography with the S1 H Mark II. And of course, Nikon are expected to release a bunch of cameras. We just talked about the Nikon Z9H. And what about the Z6 and Z7 Mark III? We haven't heard about those cameras since the summer of 2021. And Sony's supposed to announce a couple of cameras. There's also talks about a new FX6 Mark II or an FX9 Mark II. And there's also been talk about an Alpha 1 Mark II and the Sony A7S IV Mark II, or sorry, the A7S IV. But um, those rumors about Sony, they're a little bit up in the air as to what we're getting. Uh, just stay tuned for about, I'd say the first month of 2024. I think what Sony has planned, two cameras are definitely gonna be announced in the first month or two from Sony. And that's pretty interesting. But Fujifilm, now Fujifilm is supposed to be announcing three cameras in the first quarter of 2023. And I was corrected uh, by one person who told me, well, it could be a minimum of three cameras, but I'm just gonna go with three because at this point, I think that's still a big deal. And I'm British, so I like to understate things. So the Nikon Z9H is a big deal because it's gonna be part of a plethora of cameras coming out. And with this level of competition, you know we're gonna get some pretty amazing cameras. And even if you're only looking at purchasing a $500, $1,000, or a $1,500 camera, these top-end cameras, as they are competing with each other, over the years, they start to take those capabilities and they trickle down. So if they're coming out with really good headlining flagship mirrorless cameras with incredible capabilities, then the future looks good for the rest of us. But if they're not, well, then the future doesn't look very good. As it did from about 2010 to 2020 in Canon, kind of felt like the dark ages. We were getting updates, but they weren't that impressive. In fact, they felt like they were minor updates or what you could deliver in a firmer update, other than slight increase increments to the shooting frames per second. But now I ask if you could just do me one favor. If you like supporting this channel and you like purchasing camera gear and you like purchasing camera gear from B&H, Adorama, Adorama and Amazon.com, then please consider purchasing from my affiliate links down below. It doesn't cost you anything extra and I get a small commission back if you purchase something, and that really does help fund the channel. I actually make more money off affiliate links, and that's why I'm committed to getting the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, the Canon EOS R1, the 200 to 800 millimeter, and who knows, maybe a few lenses in 2024. And I'm also looking at getting a new camera outside of Canon. I don't know if it's gonna be Nikon, I don't know if it's gonna be Sony. It's whichever camera catches my attention the most. But I think if I am gonna do that, it's gonna be right around that kind of five series level, Z8 level, um, Sony A7R5 level. I'm not exactly sure yet. Or it could be something on the low end, like the A7C2, the Canon EOS R50. I'm not really sure yet. Give me your thoughts in the comment section down below. But I wanna say a special thanks to everybody who has used my affiliate links in the past couple of weeks and months. Those of you that have pre-ordered the 200 to 800 millimeter, the purchasing of that Mac uh, studio computer, a recent purchase of a Canon RF 24 to 70 lens. Thank you so much. It really does help this channel grow. And if you wanna stay up to date on all the latest and greatest news and rumors, go ahead and subscribe to this channel, but also follow me on Twitter. Um, well, for, follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter, using this link here because I'm constantly tweeting out information that isn't quite big enough to have its own separate video, like Black Friday pricing. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have yourself a great week. Uh, I guess we're coming up to the weekend soon. And I have a live stream on Black Friday, starting at 7 a.m. in the morning and going till noon. I've already got a half a dozen guests already lined up and confirmed. And the theme is gonna be what's in our camera bag. And as we're talking about what's in our camera bag, I'll be showing you B&H and Adorama the latest and greatest deals on what's being talked about. And I have guests that are, well, not from Canada and the United States. So we'll be talking to people from around the world and talking about what camera deals you can have in your local currency. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have yourself a great day and we'll see you again soon.